My name's Ed Pratt. Over the last two years, I've been on a mission to ride a unicycle around the world. This video series documents my experiences cycling from the top of Vietnam down to Singapore. This is Ed Unicycles Southeast Asia. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So just quickly before this episode starts, um, I just want to thank everyone that has already been over to Vimeo and has purchased Ed Unicycle Southeast Asia over there. Uh, all 10 episodes are available to watch right now. Your support is incredible, so thank you. And I just want to let everyone else know that I've recently reduced the price from £12.99 down to £5.99. Um, so I hope that encourages you to head over there and see how this series ends. Okay, that's it. I'll stop selling myself now. Please enjoy episode 8. Last time in this series, my sister and her boyfriend came out to find me in Thailand. We spent a fortnight travelling around, staying in fancy hotels, chilling out on beaches, playing with cute rescue dogs, and getting hammered. It was great to see both of them, and it certainly was an amusing time. I got a brand new combo, but after two weeks, I was very keen to travel a little more inexpensively, and hit the road once more on my unicycle. After leaving Sam and Nick in Phuket, I caught a plane back to Bangkok to reunite with my one-wheeled travel companion. I'd stashed it in a hotel room two weeks ago, and being such an integral part of my mission to unicycle around the world, I was relieved to find it was still there. Bike's just there. There's the unicycle. There's the wheel. Um, let's try and get it out. I'd heard that Songran, Thai New Year, was kicking off in the next few days, so I decided to stick around to experience the celebrations in the capital. I checked into Hostel 16, run by a lovely lady called Pond, and spent the next few days just unicycling around Bangkok, replacing bits of my equipment that needed replacing to prepare me for the ride down to Singapore. Most notably, these bits were a new helmet. That's new one. That's the old one. It's kind of uh, falling apart. Thank you, Rock and Rose. A new water bottle. The bottles here, yeah, from X Lab. Yeah. Yeah, right. from X Lab. Uh, yeah. Just a bottle so I can drink yeah. while I'm riding. Yeah. And a new front bag or rather a repurposed laptop bag because the zips of my previous black front bag had broken. On the morning of Songran, the 13th of April, Thai New Year's Day, in the hostel we celebrated Rot Nam Dum Hua, a ritual which involves young people pouring little vessels full of water and flowers onto the hands of the wise elderly. <laughs> it's believed that this ritual washes away bad luck, and welcomes good fortune for the future. After this very civilised affair, we set about celebrating Songran in the way it's famous for, excessive water throwing. After getting thoroughly drenched, we all took took it down to Koh San Road. I brought the unicycle thinking that I'll be able to ride up and down the strip, baiting people to splash me. But I quickly realised this wasn't ever going to work, as there was barely enough space to walk, let alone ride. So I stashed the uni at Pond's Friends Cafe, and headed out unicycleless into the crowds of Koh San Road to celebrate this very bizarre holiday. <laughs> The next day was my last in Bangkok. I wanted to thank Pond and all the guys at the hostel for the fun few days, so I made a meal for everyone. Cottage pie is my go-to British meal, because you can always find potatoes and beef anywhere in the world. Ed, I am so glad that you, you found us here, even by uh, uh, accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so glad. And, I'm um, glad to be here. And, and wish you good luck. 
will be safe for the whole trip. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If you can make it back to Hostel 16, please come back. Yeah. Thank you so much for cooking for us. Yeah. Yay! If you ever happen to find yourself in Bangkok, I'd encourage you to visit Hostel 16 and say hello to Pond. I've stayed in quite a few hostels on my unicycle ride, but I've never been made to feel quite as welcome as I felt here. I'm on my way back to start riding again, uh, going to a place called Pak Chong, and then from there I can ride to where I finished, where I, where I paused my ride last time. Looking forward to getting back on the road. Uh, I thought I'd take the train because it's quite quick and it's super cheap. This fare cost me uh, under a pound. <laughs> Granted it cost me about three pounds to get my unicycle onto the train, but still, that's like four quid for a three hour journey, which is ridiculous. Wow. So there's not much safety on these then. Just the doors open. It's all right. With the help of Maps Me, a free mobile app which I pretty much use exclusively for navigation. I found the exact point where I paused my ride three weeks ago. This is a shot for when I return in about two weeks time. This is where I stopped the ride. And now I can ride down this way and I can carry on. You may think that in the grand scheme of a world tour, heading back on myself a mere 100 miles just to reconnect the route seems a little unnecessary. However, unicycling around the world is a challenge that I set for myself and this far into my mission, I wasn't about to start cutting corners. All right, we've just rejoined the route, and uh, now I'm going to Singapore. Should take me about two months. Woo! Because I'd already seen Bangkok, I decided to route around the city to avoid having to unicycle in heavy traffic. My plan worked, and I was soon greeted with almost empty country roads. Another beautiful day in Thailand. Uh, ridiculously hot, but we're dealing with it. We're dealing with it. I'm drinking a lot of water. I've got this thing. The tri bar water bottle I've picked up was actually working really well. Ah. The same with the new laptop front bag. I was looking, I was looking at the forecast, and apparently today, is going to be like 39 degrees Celsius. Ouch. So we go into this world in our heads. We know it's a dream, but it's so much clearer than reality. World in our heads. We enter a land of immortality. Just as it was coming up to midday, the hottest part of the day, I spotted a monk by the side of the road. With my dodgy tie, I asked him his name. Concho Araikap. Gan John. Gan I'm Edward. Yeah. We struggled to communicate, but I learned that Gang John was on a pilgrimage and is either planning to, or already has, walked through Malaysia, Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia by himself. As well as sleeping in his hammock at night, he tells me that he also sleeps in monasteries along the way. Everything he owns, he either carries in two smallish bags over his back, <laughs> with a Bose speaker inside or wrapped up around his cane. And that's how you do it. Okay. How cool is the top of his cane? But if this wasn't mad enough, the most remarkable thing I found out about Gang Zhong is that he didn't have any shoes and was choosing to walk what must have been thousands of miles on incredibly hot roads, barefoot. But his feet, oh, it's hardcore. I thanked him for letting me take some photos and then left him in peace to chill out in his hammock in the shade. Oh, I felt so sorry for his feet, man. Why? He, yeah, I guess it's some kind of pilgrimage, some kind of uh, religious walk. And that's kind of the rule that he set upon himself, that he's going to do it barefoot. That's admirable. That really is. My rule is to unicycle, his rule is to walk barefoot. Kudos. As I continued pedalling south through Thailand's central region, over the next few days I found myself travelling near the coast. Feeling the need to cool off from the sweltering days, one evening I followed a sign to a restaurant by the sea. 
The owner charged me 20 baht, a little under 50p, to camp there, so I pitched up and excitedly made my way to the water's edge to cool off. The only slight issue with this plan was that the sea, having been heated by the sun all day, was a little like an unpleasantly hot bath, so I didn't quite think that one through. Oh well, it was still fun to have a quick dip. Over the next week, I didn't film as regularly as I have been, choosing to just enjoy riding through the Thai countryside without feeling the pressure of having to try and capture everything. Having said that, I still picked up the camera occasionally. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It rained a lot, and as we were reaching rainy season, this wasn't a surprise, especially when you look at the lush vegetation everywhere. I was also invited by some monks to camp in their monastery. Unlike Gang Jong, the barefoot travelling monk I'd met a few days ago, these guys wore sandals and have been living here for years. But how many? So one, two, three, four... How many in the whole area? Ten. Ten? Only ten? Mm. In the morning, they kindly gave me a breakfast of eggs and rice. Later on in the week, I met a guy called Adong. Okay, okay. <laughs> that chap that just passed, he just invited me to uh, his home. Following him to his house, I soon learnt that he was a tattoo artist, and as he was inking his friend that night, he was happy to let me watch. This chap was getting a tiger tattoo, or rather he was getting a tiger to cover up a smaller tiger he obviously wasn't very happy with. A couple of hours later, it was done, and while I probably wouldn't choose this tattoo for myself, Adung's friend seemed very pleased with it. Now, from watching my videos, you might have spotted a kind of theme appearing. Tomorrow is literally my last day in Vietnam. I need to ride 81 miles to Vientiane today. That sign says Bangkok is 380 kilometers away. I've got to do that in four days. So, time management isn't my strong suit, and it seems to result in me always having to make a mad dash on my unicycle to get somewhere on time. Be that the Lao border, the Thailand border, or most recently Bangkok to see my sister. Now, I'd like to say that I'd learnt from my mistakes in the past, and I was going to reach Malaysia in plenty of time before my Thai visa expired. Yeah, I'd like to say that. I've got 250 miles to ride in the next four days. So, as it was, I'd again stupidly left myself with a very tough, very avoidable challenge ahead. This time, it was to push myself 62 miles every day for the next four days to reach the Malaysian border. Oh, and if you've forgotten, I need to do this all on a unicycle. But enough complaining. Not knowing what happens if you overstay your Thai visa, and not particularly wanting to find out, I kept on pushing myself south towards the border. So we go into this world in our heads I last cut my hair one year ago. Today is the day it goes. Thank you for watching this instalment of Ed Unicycle Southeast Asia. It's, it's incredibly exciting to be able to finally share these videos with you. I think they're the best that I've ever made. Basically, if you want to watch them all right now and you don't want to wait every week for a new episode to appear on YouTube, you can go over to Vimeo and there you can binge watch the whole series. So I'm trying something a bit different with this series and I'm putting it up for sale for people that want to see it first. And basically this will help support the editing process because I've still got all of the US videos to edit and the videos cycling down through the UK to finish off my world unicycle tour. All of that is still need, in need of editing and it's going to take months because this four months of footage cycling through Southeast Asia took three months to put together. I imagine it's going to be pretty similar putting the rest of the videos together. So basically, if you want to watch all the videos or the Southeast Asian videos right now, you can and it'll also be supporting me while I'm putting together the future videos. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next week for Ed Unicycle Southeast Asia or right now if you decide to go over to Vimeo.